It's July the 7th, 2011. It's a beautiful evening, and this is 508, a show about Worcester. Today on the show, we have a special guest, Adrian LaPierre. Hello. How are you doing, Adrian? Great, thank you. And so, I, I, finally, we have somebody here. You're from the uh, Building a Green Solidarity Economy Conference? Yeah, that's right. We've got a conference going on on July 23rd. It's going to be at the Worcester Youth Center, and it's going to be a great time. All right, unpack that phrase for me, building a green solidarity economy. Okay, so um, there's three pieces, obviously. So the economy part, uh, most people tend to think of the economy as markets, but we like to think of it as the work that needs to be done and uh, ways of doing it. So okay. um, it includes non-monetized activities as well, trade, barter, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, and then the green part is you know taking into account um, trying to do business in a way that is good for the planet and mm -hmm. not just avoids destruction of the planet but actually regenerates um, our ecological systems okay and then the solidarity part is just finding commonality and difference and coming together to really do what needs to be done uh, in our communities okay so this would be this would be sort of creating a cooperative how do i want to restate this something which is ecologically positive helps people help each other get things done, and involves the spirit of cooperation. Yeah, that's great. I mean, the simplest way to put it would be putting people and the planet before profit. Let me point out, it's raining so hard, rain is dripping through through the umbrella <laughs> onto us underneath the umbrella. This is some rain, people. All right, so, um, <laughs> this is the greenest show in Worcester, by the way. Oh, it's Look at, we have no yeah. lights. We basically walked at the show. It's very nice. So, um, what is it? So, so this conference is about just bringing people together who are interested in this stuff? Yeah, a lot of people and organizations that are already doing um, really great work. Um, but the point of the conference is to come up with new ways that we can collaborate and really move forward and grow the green economy in Worcester. Okay. Do you have any, do you have any uh, ideas of like, I don't know, like, like where do you see it happening these days in Worcester? Where do you sit going? Um, well, I think cooperative incubation is really necessary and also thinking more about micro enterprise, like even smaller than small businesses, but just doing initiatives and projects that don't require a lot of funding or resources and in which people have an equal say in the outcome. Okay. As, and so that would sort of connect into the idea of, of uh, solidarity economy. Solidarity economy, yeah. Okay. Time trade is a great way of facilitating those sorts of initiatives. Right. And, uh, and you've been involved with setting up time trade in Worcester, right? Yes, that's right. So, so I, this is another thing I want to talk to you about. This is fascinating. So, this, so time trade is sort of, this is sort of a systematized way for people to like barter. I would say barter their barter services. Barter services. All right. So, um, how's it? So how's it going? It's going great. I mean, we've only been up for, uh, this This will be our fourth month now running, and we've got 50 members, um, maybe about 20 of them are active traders. Okay. We've got some pretty high value services like child care, house cleaning, those sorts of things Perfect. all offered for free. Yeah, in ex well, for free in exchange for people contributing. In exchange for other free services. Contributing yeah. other services to the system. Right. I think it's, I think it's fascinating because it seems like like there's always so many people who have, who are skilled and who have, um, like, who have, who have, an, who have time, and are looking for work in like the money economy. And it feels like, you know, it's like I don't know. I guess during the depression, people would do stuff like, uh, uh, you know, like the government would just like be like, we're just going to pay you to do whatever, to make some cool mural or build some trail or something, because like you have the time and you want to work and like. It's just a question of does somebody have the money, and we all agree this is valuable. It's just that somehow the money aspect of this is broken. There's not the money to make this happen. Um, it just seems like this. It seems like this is a place where like somebody who's like out of work, who has a skill, can't find jobs in the money economy, can maybe tap into something like a time trade thing to say, all right, I can get house cleaning, I can get tutoring for my kids, I can get whatever I need to get. Yeah, that's a really great observation. I mean, there are a lot of people who are really undervalued in the overall monetary economy who can find ways of uh, having fulfilling work, um, but not only that, being able to receive really, you know, services that they need. There are a lot of successful time trades where um, one of the major services offered is health care, and that's incredible for like people who are like, un underinsured. Like what kind of health? Like holistic health care or like... Both, MRIs. both. Uh, <laughs> not MRIs necessarily, but definitely a primary care visit. 
uh, could be covered because actually doctors find that they can uh, you know receive valuable services through the time trade and they also find that they don't want to turn their uninsured patients away right uh, so this is a great way of just moving the value around the community and um, allowing people to access things that they really need so the doctors can sort of say I'm gonna give some free care but I'm gonna instead of just doing it as a complete whatever a complete uh, 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 philanthropic thing, I'll do it and I'll donate it to the time trade, so at least it will be like part of a community of people. Yeah, because even if you wanted to offer uninsured patients care, uh, you couldn't really do that on a large scale um, right. without you know, making your practice insolvent, so right. this is a way of maintaining the business aspect, but at the same time really helping people out in so, a tough time. So let me ask you about people getting involved in this stuff. Who, who, who? The Green Solidarity Economy Conference is July... 23rd. It's 20, a Saturday, and 23rd. it's all day, 10 to 6. At? At the Worcester Youth Center on Chandler Street. At the Youth Center. And who, if somebody is at home thinking, all right, maybe, how do they know if they should go or not? Well, my suggestion would be, we actually have a Solidarity Economy Bazaar that's happening outside the conference. All right. And all of those events are going to be free and open to the public. So okay. we have a free market where people are just donating goods and you can come and check out what we have. Yes. We have a barter market where if you're an artist or an artisan or even a grower and you want to bring some products to trade, you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a Skillshare. So if you want to come learn how to repair your bike from Earn a Bike, for instance, you can come do that. All participants in those activities receive $5 off the conference admission. Okay. Um, so it would be good to check it out first and then maybe decide after. So, there's, oh, so, so, so if people are even slightly interested, they should just show up to see they what the heck is up. happening. Yeah, and, then, and then how is it, is it an expensive conference? Um, it's at the door, it'll be $15, oh although if goodness. you get your $5 off, that's $10. Uh -huh. If you get um, a ticket before July 22nd, which you can do online, mm -hmm. um, it'll be... Uh, it's only ten dollars. Right. And then, and so as far as the time trade thing goes, that's, there's also like an online presence for that. Uh, people should basically Google Worcester time. Google trade, Worcester time trade. And you'll find this. And then, what is it like? What's the process like for somebody to get involved with that? Um, well, if you go to our website, you can find out really a lot of information. But if you'd like to join directly, there's a join link on the left hand side of the site, and uh, and it's essentially a social network. So you just set up a profile, much like setting up a Facebook profile. It's pretty easy. Um, and then once you're in the network, you can see what services people offer and you can think about what kind of offers you'd like to make. So I feel like people are going to look at this, if the people are like me, they're going to look at this and they're going to say like, what do I bring to the table? Like, what can I do? I, you know, here's what I can do. I can harass people on a camera. <laughs> I can potentially configure your .ht access file. That's, you know, I have a very I don't even limited, know what that I feel is. like, I, there you go. So, so, well, if you need that, I can help. Do you have, okay. if you have any sort of weird website that. forwarding issue going on, moving to a new kind of website, I'm all about that. But people, I feel like people are going to look at this and they're going to be like, I'm just some guy. I do very well on a cube farm, you know, like, I don't know what I'm going to supposed to do, like, outside of that. It's definitely difficult to think differently about what you bring to the table, um, but when the best way to start thinking about it is to look at the services that people have requested because you can post requests as well mm -hmm. and say oh you know what that's actually not too hard and I can help with that um, and but that should anyway get your thoughts going about um, what other things you can do but the best advice that I have is really to offer things that you love doing that mm -hmm. you really want to spend your time doing and not things that you think other people want you know what I'm going to put on there? I'm going to put on there I will, that I can make someone a two-minute video about their project. Or organization. Or yeah, organization. that's a great service. That's what I, that's what I'm going to put that on the time trade. So you should sign up for the time trade if you want me to make a two-minute video about your organization. That'll be, that would Excellent be awesome. Idea. Well, thank you for being on the show. These sound like cool things. Thank you, Mike. Also on today's show, we have Brendan Malik. And Brendan, how are you, sir? Excellent. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. We have a, a bunch of things to talk about on the show today. Uh, Peter Michael Preble, the blogging priest, in City Times swimsuit issue, Ducky Owl on Gizmodo, mushrooms, possibly traffic, St. John's Soup Kitchen expands, possibly city council issues, Abbott expands, summer nationals, Nazis, whether or not Worcester sucks. I think that about covers it all. How are you doing? Great. Yourself? Uh, you know, life is suffering. That's what I've under, That's what I understand. That's what my, that's what my Buddhist friends tell me. That's what I. That's my experience. Um, <laughs> I'm having a great time though. So I don't. 
Teach and, their own. and what do you in today on the show we um, also have I just did. Samuel Adams Brewer oh. Patriot. Yeah, there he is. Boston Logger. He's having a great time too. Look at the smile on his face. I should have interviewed him last week rather than that captain, yeah. that little statue. Um, I think the big news this week actually is something that we totally happened last week. We could have talked about in last week's show, totally forgot in the chaos of last week's show, which is Paul Stamets, who's like the mushroom guy. Okay. Like maybe Terrence McKenna was the mushroom guy mm-hmm. for some, some values of the mushroom guy, especially people who are more into the entheogens rather than the bioremediation angle of it. Paul Stamets though, actually did, in fact, write a book about entheogenic mushrooms and as well he has a great TED talk he knows all about mushrooms mm-hmm. all about uh, using them for all kinds of purposes especially using them for improving uh, farming and the environment and stuff I think the sun's behind me probably blinding this camera yeah well, he was at Clark last week and he talked as far as we can tell for the first time publicly about this new method of preparing material to grow fungi on which is just kind of incredible which cuts the price of growing fungi in, in like field situations by like mm-hmm. 99%. Right. Or at least the preparing. But basically the idea was that you used to be like so you want to like grow fungi. Let's say you want to grow fungi here, you want to help the forest do better. Maybe there's some sort of toxic runoff coming down here so you want to put like put some sandbags of mushrooms down here or you just want to sort of create a nice mat of the it's it's like it's like the the mycelium, like the underground mm-hmm. fibers right. that like occasionally you see the fruiting body come up, but the mycelium it used to be, you know, you want to like grow some spores in there. You basically got to like make this like sterilized thing of wood exactly. chips or sterilized thing of sawdust. Hard to sterilize wood chips or sawdust. You got to radiate it. You got to maybe bake it in an oven for a long time. If you don't, you'll get mushrooms, just not the ones not, you want. It's just a pain in the ass because right. it's contaminated. Right. It's like brewing beer. Because there's spores everywhere. Right? If and people like brew beer or something, they know about this. Yes. That you just got to, everything has to be super that's sterile. Why I'm convinced that mushrooms are actually some sort of dark magic. That's, you know, it's like. The Smurfs lived in mushrooms after all. That whole like insufficiently advanced science like appears to be magic sort of thing. That's mm-hmm. that's where fungus is. So the idea here, Brendan, is this is a fermentation process mm-hmm. where you basically soak the mushrooms in water for a week or two. Could be fresh water, could be salt water. It goes anaerobic. Mm-hmm. All the aerobic bacteria die. Anaerobic bacteria grow. You okay. take it out. You spread it out on a tarp. It stinks like hell. You spread it out on a tarp and let it dry. Once it's dry, you put it in your burlap sacks and start growing some shrooms. Are these hallucinogenic mushrooms? Any mushrooms? He told me, I asked him after the talk, he said he said it worked well for oyster mushrooms, turkey tail mushrooms, and then he said something, some Latin name of a mushroom, assuming that somehow I knew what I was talking about. Okay. I don't know what he was talking about. Um, but people were checking it out. People were trying to find out like what, how it works for other species, how it works mm-hmm. for, you know, if it's generally good or if it's only good for... Oyster, I mean, the mushrooms that he's talking about, though, are like mushrooms that people oftentimes use in the field for like trying to de- detoxify sure. sites or whatever. So that's maybe the big Worcester news of the last couple of weeks is is that our city much like sigmund freud we're gonna be ground zero for came to america and then spoke at clark paul stamets <laughs> invented some possibly so, ground, 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 groundbreaking possibly not mushroom someday growing technique. when mushrooms take over your planet you can look back to worcester massachusetts <laughs> in the first week of july paul stamets and that that's where it all came together that's right that's exactly right so also on the, also in the news this week um, I'm going to run through some stuff. So Peter Michael Preble is an Orthodox priest who mostly, well, I think we know from, I think he used to do a podcast and he also blogs extensively, which is kind of awesome. And um, uh, there's an article in the paper today. Did you see this article about him in the paper today? I did not. Basically, people had set up this like warehouse for distributing relief supplies to tornado victims down mm-hmm. in Southbridge. And so now this is according to the paper. Like his, on Facebook, he says, I quote, how do you get your reputation back after people lie about you to the press? The answer is hopefully they're talking to the TNG, so not that many people read, read the it lie, anyways. so it doesn't matter. <laughs> but um, according to the article, or they just assume uh, that the TNG is lying, so they believe the lie about you is. Actually this is also a true. Lie. Yes, yes. You know, it, I mean, you know, ideally the NCD Times writes about you, but if the TNG writes about you, then who knows? Anyway, it it's close enough. Um, so basically, the idea is that like they put him in charge of this warehouse of supplies, and then some people come in there to look at the warehouse, and the warehouse is empty. And then they call him, and he's like, listen, nobody was coming to this warehouse to get stuff. Mm-hmm. So, like, everything just basically went to the Boys and Girls Club, and we shut down the warehouse. No. This is the version in the paper. This is apparently not the truth of the matter. Not the truth. I didn't see anything in this article except for perhaps more, someone taking more initiative than people were comfortable with. Mm-hmm. That seemed out of line. Hmm. Like, honestly, if you put me in, this is why nobody puts me in charge of a tornado relief warehouse. I would have done the same thing. Hmm. You know? I would have called the press myself, actually, and said, why are people wasting my time running a warehouse that nobody's using? I'm giving it all away. <laughs> I'm giving it all away. It's, uh, it's what do you call it? It's, uh, uh, God bless you. Charitable giving. <laughs> God bless you, Mr. Rosewater. Exactly. That's exactly. Um, NC, NC Times swimsuit issue is out this week. Well, thank goodness. 
And this, this is a, photos of n normal Worcester women such as Constantina Lukes. Is she in again this year? She is always in there, wear, wearing swimsuits, or in her case, wearing swimsuits mm -hmm. and some sort of strange skirt. And uh, it's sort of weird. Like the Institute Times has had so much in the last recent years, in recent years of like. Uh, uh, like cheap shots at women for their looks, cheap shots at women for their weight, cheap shots at women for their cellulite. Mm -hmm. That like, really what we can say about this is this is the one issue a year that there will none, be none of those cheap shots. No. Um, also, of course, although normally, as NC Times haters like to point this out, they always run this sleazy ad on the back for PW Tattoo. It isn't there, of course. So, you know, the objectification of women's bodies, alive and well at the NC Times. Good, you know, but there yeah. it is. The swimsuit issue also covers in color. Kind of a special thing. It's not really a swimsuit, though. I don't know what it is. It's not really. It's not. They always run that ad. In yeah. People, people who people who like to hate on the NCD Times point out that like this is a sleazy ad, which seems to undercut a lot of what they talk about. I love. Let me let me make this perfectly clear. I love in, to pick on the NCD Times, but I won't have ink done in Worcester anywhere but Port of Worcester tattoo. And I've had conversations with the owners, but like, hey, you should be advertising there, but. You know, what, are you gonna do? what are you going to do? What are you going to do? All I know is that that's that's my guy when it comes to comes to ink. So. And this is man. Well, that's a, that's that's a terrible example, but <laughs> there's better. Okay. Anyway, um, also we got happiness pony, a new happiness pony out this week. What can you say? There it is. Um, we've got uh, Ducky Owl made it into Gizmodo for something that we pointed out that Ducky Owl, the Worcester uh, Chinese restaurant, takes bitcoins. Yeah. And uh, have they actually taken one though? That's I don't know. I don't know. I could find out. We could find out. I think we should find out. But uh, they will take it. Um, a friend of mine who's obsessed with Bitcoin r learned this, and so I, I hope that he will go there and right. use a Bitcoin. Did you, I think I passed along to you that there's now a Bitcoin Android app that's uh, it's in beta now, but it um. Yeah, so you can have your Bitcoin wallet on your phone. On your phone. And yeah. back it up to the Google Cloud. Beautiful. Very nice. We've got um, St. John's Soup Kitchen, best soup kitchen in the city. A soup kitchen I haven't gone to for years, though, uh, is expanding. They're thinking about buying, you know, you know that grocery store, that, that produce stand by St. John's? Mm -hmm. They're, they're going to buy that and turn that into uh, really? uh, like, a, like a district, like a food, like a whole soup kitchen slash pantry slash just, you know, the Pentagon of free food or whatever you want to call Beautiful. it right there. Pretty cool. It's a, fantastic. Good job, Father Madden. Good job, people of St. John's. Uh, Abbott is also going to expand. You know Abbott Pharmaceuticals out by uh, the Beechwood? Yes. They, the only time I've ever been up there actually was to protest them <laughs> years ago. <laughs> but they're expanding their facility. Okay. They're getting some property over there. and Will they be expanding the protests? Or, or no, we, I think the protests are done. Cool this, was about, this was just one of these things about making AIDS, AIDS drugs available to the developing world. I mm -hmm. feel like Abbott probably is, you know, most, most pharmaceutical companies, it seems like with a little pressure, make good steps in that direction. So I'm mm -hmm. sure Abbott is, yeah. has also. I don't know. I just went because, I don't know. I don't even remember why. Um, the the uh, the, it's the Saturday and there's nothing else to do. The New England Nazis, the Noop guys are coming and they're going to be here next Saturday. And uh, <laughs> um, you know, uh, the last time they were in town, there was not there were people who came in and like attacked them with bike locks, but there wasn't like a big protest presence because I think it was like a last minute uh, scheduling thing for them to be in town. And uh, this time, it seems like people are organizing much earlier like a week out around this thing so there could be larger protests the the, the, the protest flyer i'm going to be out of town in, in any case but the protest things that i've seen actually talk about uh, people should come out to 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 try to get the city to not let them use the library which i think many many of us uh, uh nazi opponents disagree with that point of view so it'll be interesting to see how this manifests itself maybe not that interesting but it will be interesting to see um brendan does worcester suck no, well, I mean, it has its uh, it has its negatives, right? I mean, but every place does. It does not suck. Did you want to actually talk about this on the show? I did. Yeah, go ahead. Let's uh, you, no, tell me what I'm talking. So, about. so what we're talking about is just that tell some some po someone I don't know who could, I don't know who it could be. It's not me. I've been yeah. accused of starting this website on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I did not start this website. There's, so what, blame you anyways. Website called WorcesterSucks.com, mm -hmm. and it makes a statement at the top: Worcester sucks because you suck. Right. It's like one of these like DIY like if you're not having a good time in Worcester. It's your own damn fault. It's your own. It's not. It's it's your own damn fault. Not only for having not having a good time, but not having the civic energy to like improve the city. Right. Like if you're out there, if if Tina Zlody comes up to you and says, "Brendan, Worcester is not a great city," you can say, "Tina, you're just like out there bleeding every day to make this a good city." If you don't think it's a good city, if Kate Toomey comes up to you and says, "Worcester is no good," right. you got to say, "Kate is out there making it happen." And if she says it's no good, she has a right to speak. Right. And like I, what I was saying to you earlier about that, it, it absolutely spot on right like that that's that's life right you got to make the most of it you know you, you do your own thing sort of thing yeah um but 
The problem, though, is that that's not new. Like, and, and there's no lack of that. Like, every single corner of Worcester is actually full of people doing their own thing and making yeah. their own fun. Mm -hmm. The problem is, I mean, like, saying to you earlier myself, too, like, 20 years ago, I mean, my buddies and I, we, we were creating, like, with power tools, spaces out in the woods for young people to party, like, yes. you know, for, for entire weeks at a time during the summer. Those spots are still being used by kids, like, on the west side to, like, hide from the cops and their parents <laughs> and whatnot. That's, and that's a beautiful thing. Like, we've always been making... Catacombs. Our, We've always been making our own fun because the city hasn't provided any fun for us. Mm -hmm. But that's actually kind of the problem. It's like because we made our own fun 20 years ago and we made our own good time, we actually ended up kind of walling ourselves off from the city at large. We weren't really doing anything. Well, I mean, there's alcohol involved, still is. But mm -hmm. at the time, it was illegal to be a young person drinking, still is, right? So, I mean, we mm -hmm. kind of walled ourselves off from the rest of the city. That's, uh, in a way, even more of a problem than just someone, some asshole coming along and saying, there's nothing good to do around here, right? Like, right. there's always going to, in any place, there's always going to be the, the, the appearance of, like, being a lack of something, right? Because there's mm -hmm. always more work to do. But this idea that all of that can be fixed by people, like, making their own good time kind of misses the larger point that it is very possible that a city like Worcester has institutional failings mm -hmm. that aren't going to be corrected by just everybody peeling off into their own chosen groups of friends and making each other smile. So it needs to, you need to make some you need to make your own fun and you need to also do your own outreach. Yeah, I mean there there is something bigger <clears throat> at play, right? That like the city of Worcester does have some major hurdles to cross in terms of you know drawing outsiders in, building up its population, right. uh, increasing you know the opportunities for for employment or what have you. Legalizing hot dog stands, legalizing or at least hot decriminalizing them. Decriminalizing them <laughs> that we can tax them. Jeez, <laughs> we, why didn't we think of this before? <laughs> they could be a business. All right. Um, but yeah, no, I mean just the idea that there, there are there are parts of the city that are broken. They're institutional yeah. parts. I mean, like you and I, as soon as the camera goes off, we can make our own fun, right? I mean, and there'll be no evidence of that, and we can do We're things We're making our own fun right, right now. now. Don't tell anybody, though. I, so, uh, I, while I agree in totality that, like, yes, anyone who just sits around all day thumbing their, their, their ass saying there's nothing to do in Worcester, Worcester sucks, is in and of, the, you know, is, is by definition just a jerk. But at the same time, you can't ignore the fact that there is bigger work to do that cannot be solved simply by you know, peeling off into a small circle of, of friends and, you know, making the most of an afternoon. Let me, let, let me make a more, let me make a more nuanced and thus less impactful and viral and likely to be attention to, paid attention to argument along the lines of Worcester sucks because you suck, which is that when somebody complains about Worcester, they're doing two things, mm -hmm. which are offensive to myself and per offensive to the person who made this website. Number one, they're disempowering themselves. Right. Worcester is a small town. If yes. you want to be on the cover of the TNG tomorrow, God forbid, you can do that. <laughs> I used to, Kevin and I used to play around with the idea that we would do a challenge to see who could get on the front cover of the TNG more times in a week. Mm -hmm. Because it's definitely a challenge you could win. Right. I bet I could get, I bet twice, I bet twice would be two times on A1 in a week would be very doable. A so more reasonable a challenge would be getting, trying to have a challenge where you picked an individual <laughs> who didn't know that you were bringing them into this challenge and see how many times. Like, you get that person. How many we, times could we get? How many, you, get, you get the snow ghost. <laughs> You're going to get the snow ghost. I get to come up with somebody. Oliver. And yes, that's, the, that's game on, right? We're going to get <laughs> them. <Yeah. laughs> a third, two, two third parties. Um, but that, so, you know, if somebody's like, you know, I don't like Worcester because it doesn't have, uh, I don't know, it, because it doesn't have, you know, a park that's four, four miles wide. Or, I mean, yeah, because it doesn't you're, have Central Park, because it doesn't have a financial district. Hard then, no, I mean, th there's some things that people could say, you know, I don't like Worcester because it doesn't have a great, you know, a great seaport. Mm -hmm. It's like, fine. Like, Worcester doesn't have everything for every person. But if you're just, like, sitting there complaining that, like, Worcester sucks, and you're not actually out there grappling with it, yeah. you're disempowering yourself. Yes. You're ignoring the fact that you have a lot of control over the quality of life in this city. Agreed, again, I agree and completely. the second thing that you're doing, mm -hmm. if you're saying out there saying that Worcester sucks is, you're pissing me off. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Like, you're making the little sphere around you suck by saying Worcester sucks. And luckily, the little sphere around you, because you're not taking part in the city, is incredibly tiny. But you're still bothering me mm -hmm. if I hear you say that Worcester sucks in the tiniest way. So just you should just stop it for those two reasons. I don't know. You know, this no, is not okay. the... I agree completely. I mean, go, it's, it's a beautiful summer. Go get your, your buddies, grab a bag of mushrooms, and just go take a walk around the city, right? I mean, legal mushrooms, right? What, what were the kinds that you're saying? Were um, growing? Oyster, mushrooms, oyster mushrooms, turkey yes, tail, right. and you're something. You're turkey tails all over the city. I don't know if you can eat them, but I don't, anyway, you could eat a, a, Make hats a chicken little woods. Know, chicken little woods you could eat, I know. Yeah. I don't know anything about mushrooms. Well, um, I think that actually, I think, well, you know, I think that's actually the end of our show for today. Brendan? 
Thank you for uh, coming out the woods and making Thanks some fun. Me. Hey, it's always fun. Yeah. And uh, I'm Michael Vanegetti. Thanks for making sure that my day didn't suck in Worcester. Here's an example of someone who could have had a terrible day, but did he take did he take the bull by the horns? Well, took the beer by the horns, and <laughs> that was, that's all it took. <laughs> Fantastic. Everyone, have a wonderful summer. Bye bye. We're not see him again till the end. Of what? Summer. We're not going to see him again till the end of summer. You know, I rem this actually reminds me of something that we were talking about. I think last summer when we had Gabe Rollins on the show. We had a show with Gabe and Cha Cha. Yeah, down in the common. Down in the common. That like it does seem like the that city. Was a watershed watersheds show for this for for five hundred eight, I believe. Why? Well, that's the one where we discussed like uh you know the the, the census and you know how we Province. count everything wrong and you know, municipal areas. Municipal areas. Well, so I just remember one takeaway from that show. I thought this is the show I think about, which is that like it does seem like the powers that be in Worcester conspire against you having a good time. Oh yeah. And you know what? But the thing is, they don't have a lot of power over your life. And so we yeah. said on that show, and I'm going to say it to you people right now, screw you, Worcester. I'm going to have a great <laughs> summer. Stand up, open the window, Howard Beale style, stick your head outside, and scream it to your neighbors, screw you, I'm going to have a great summer. All right? See you out there, kids. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs>